You can start. Hi, I'm Adrian Hill, Vice President of the Automation Center of Excellence at American Express. I'm David Friedman. I'm the Director of the RPA Center of Excellence at American Express. Perfect. So the reason why I wanted to interview you guys is because, you know, a lot of practitioners look at American Express as one of the um, thought leaders or one of the originators, basically, of, you know, the implementation of RPA, intelligent automation. Um, so a lot of them want to get your opinions on basically how to implement this, how to go about it, um, and just look at you as role models, per se. So just a few questions for you guys. Um, what are your keys to success when it comes to um, the implementation of intelligent automation at American Express? Um, and how did you get to be as successful as you are? I'd say our very most important key to success has been our collaborative approach with our customers and our business partners. Here, so it's okay. Um, I think one of the first things is to recognize early on whether we did or did not have the skill sets in house in order to, to move forward with an intelligent automation program, determining whether to go with a partner or to uh, be able to build it internally or organically on our own. Uh, once we determined that we could build it organically on our own, really understanding uh, the way that uh, do you want me to be shorter? No, no speak no, up. Sorry. sorry. <laughs> Am I supposed to look down? No, 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 you can look at here. We'll edit this part. Okay. One of the earliest uh, determinations we made was that we had the skills in-house in order to build this organically on our own and uh, avoid uh, partnering with, uh, with a consultancy to, to really drive our automation COE. Um, secondly, it was really good. Go with that. I know, it was really good. <laughs> okay, for those of you who aren't quite familiar of um, where your implementation process started or what functions you started automating, um, could you let me know which ones those would be um, and why those exactly? So we really started to look at where most of the manual activity was occurring within the servicing network and we worked with our partners to prioritize their backlog and make sure we were working on what was most important to them. Um, and by taking an agile approach and setting up our scrum teams to support each function, we were able to divide and conquer, so to speak, and ensure that everybody essentially got a piece of the pie and a good um, support from our group in terms of what they wanted to get automated. One of the easiest ways to start for us was to look where we had the data in-house to really understand where benefits cases were, uh, where we had KPIs, where we had partners in operating areas that really understood their business holistically as opposed to a task-based look. Those were the Do you mind? <laughs> After this call. So, um, I'm working with business partners that have the key data and ability for us to make uh, prioritization determinations and understand where we can start and have the best ROI um, to go forward. Perfect. Um, what do you intend to do as far as developing your IA or RPA program or what's, what's the next step basically? We believe that automation is truly a toolkit so we are trying to build multiple tools that work in our toolkit. There's not a one um, size fits all solution. So we really want to ensure that we've got different capabilities within our toolkit that can address different needs, like an intelligent optical character recognition capability, certainly RPA solutions. And other capabilities that can address the different needs that our business partners have. For others who are basically in the same um, stages as you, or are going through their maturity stages, um, and are trying to develop their COE to the point where you guys have developed it, um, what words of advice would you give to them? I'd advise to go slow and think it out. I've heard a lot of uh, industry thought leaders make sure you don't spend 
six months, one year, 18 months to come in with your COE. But you really should start to understand the general tenor of the conversation from various partners, whether you need a partner or not, and build out the five to seven core competencies of your COE. Um, everything from planning out your runtime operations, and sourcing your uh, organization matrix to make sure you're ready to which is paramount, and this can't be done in a vacuum. We really need their support for both infrastructure and uh, overall compliance and rights. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then this is a question for both of you individually. If there was one thing that you could tell yourself back when, you know, none of this was basically done and solidified, um, what would that be? Like, what would you have done differently? I think I would have ensured that we had a true center of excellence built out for the entirety of our organization first um, and made sure that we were all together and really building on our economies of scale and really taking this agile approach, which to me the most important aspect is the collaborative collaboration piece and working very closely with our business partners and just making sure they were a part of the solutioning and really the prioritization of what we should be working on. One of the things, if we could go back and do it all over again, was to make sure that we had buy-in and partnership and understanding of the space by the most senior leaders in our organization. Uh, we've gotten there since then, uh, but at the beginning of non reaching COE, if you could have top-down executive partnership, really understanding that this is a new way of doing business, a new tool set, a new, a new way of thinking, I think we would have uh, probably accelerated our development both in building a COE and deploying processes to gain ROI for the business across a very variety of other things. Great. Can you do one thing? 